This is lesson 4.5, Proving Triangles Congruent, ASA, AAS. Your objectives are to use the ASA postulate to test congruence and to use the AAS theorem to test for congruence. These proofs are done the same way that the proofs with side, 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 and side, angle, side were done, with just a different order. ASA is when you have two angles and the sides in between them, and AAS is when you have two angles and the very next side. So if you have two triangles with one pair of angles, the very next pair of sides, and the very next pair of angles, that's angle, side, angle. The side is between the two angles. Those triangles are congruent. If you have two triangles where you have one pair of angles, the very next pair of angles, and the next pair of sides, that's angle, angle, side. And those triangles are congruent. You can use this as a guide. When you're doing congruent triangle proofs, the first thing you always say is what's given. The second thing to do is to find the other pairs of congruent parts. The other side pairs and the other angle pairs. This is where you will use the chart that you made. Are, are there any shared sides? Are there any angle bisectors that make two congruent angles? Are there vertical angles that are congruent? Are there parallel lines with alternate interior angles? Are there any midpoints that cut a segment in two? That's where you do those pieces. Get all the remaining side pairs and angle pairs that are congruent. Step three is to say that the triangles are congruent once you have enough pieces of information. And you'll use SSS, SAS, ASA, or AAS. Finally, if they ask you for proving parts congruent instead of triangles congruent, then you'll need to do step four. And you will say that the other parts are congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So if they want you to prove triangles congruent, you'll stop at step three. But if you're proving parts congruent, go on to step four. Number one, write a two-column proof. Given angle S is congruent to angle V and T is the midpoint of segment SV, prove that triangle RTS is congruent to triangle UTV. Well, as always, start with what you're given. Angle S is congruent to angle V and T is the midpoint of segment SV. The reason that's true is because we were given that information. That gives us one pair of angles. Is that pair of angles enough to say that the triangles are congruent? No, it's not. So let's look for other things now, the other parts that are congruent. So here's where you look for things like shared sides, which they don't have, or segment bisectors, which they don't have, or midpoints, which they do have. T is the midpoint of segment SV. So let's use that. If it's the midpoint of segment SV, then segment SV is cut in half. And those two halves are segment ST, which is congruent to segment TV. That's true because of the midpoint theorem. That's one pair of angles now and one pair of sides. Is that enough to say the triangles are congruent? No, it's not. So let's keep looking. Are there parallel lines with alternate interior angles? No. Are there vertical angles? Yes. Angle RTS is congruent to angle VTU. Anytime you have vertical angles, use them. Why are they congruent? Because vertical angles are congruent. So that gives us a pair of angles 
a pair of sides, and a pair of angles. Is that enough to say the triangles are congruent? Yes, it is. So triangle RTS is congruent to triangle UTV. Why? Because of angle side angle. You have an angle, the very next side, and the very next angle. That's angle side angle, so the triangles are congruent. So remember, start with what you're given, then find the other pairs of congruent parts, looking for shared sides or vertical angles or midpoints or alternate interior angles. Once you have enough pieces to say the triangles are congruent, say that they're congruent. The final way to show that triangles are congruent is angle-angle-side. We showed you an example of that a little while ago. Now let's do a proof that uses angle-angle-side. It's two angles and the very next side. It's not the side between the angles. Instead, it's the next side. Write a two-column proof. Given that segment BC is parallel to segment EF, the measure of segment AB equals the measure of segment ED, and angle C is congruent to angle F, prove that the triangles are congruent. Step one is always start with what you're given. And that's true because we were given that information. Now so far we have one pair of angles congruent. Is that enough to say the triangles are congruent? No, it's not. Now since they gave us that the measure of segment AB equals the measure of segments ED, then we can also say that segment AB is congruent to segment ED because of the definition of congruent segments. Anytime they say that measures are equal, go ahead and change it to saying that the segments are congruent by the definition of congruent segments. So now we have a pair of angles and a pair of sides. Is that enough to say the triangles are congruent? No, it's not. So what else do we know? There's not any shared sides, no midpoints, but they do give us parallel segments. If segment BC is parallel to segment EF, that gives us two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, special angle pairs are congruent. In this case, I don't have alternate interior angles, but I do have corresponding angles. So I can say that angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF because corresponding angles are congruent when the lines are parallel. Now I have a pair of angles, the next pair of angles, and the very next pair of sides. Is that enough to say the triangles are congruent? Yes, it is. Now they made a typo, so change the prove statement to say triangle ABC instead of triangle ABD. So you can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF because of angle angle side. So we started with what we were given. That gave us one pair of angles. Then we used the guide and other clues to find the other pairs of congruent parts. Segment AB is congruent to segment ED and the pair of corresponding angles. That gave us angle-angle side, so we were able to say then that the triangles were congruent. So anytime you're proving triangles congruent, start with what you're given, then mark the other parts congruent. Use that chart to help you as a guide. Are there any shared sides that are congruent to themselves? Any vertical angles that are congruent? Any alternate interior angles that are congruent? Get all of those remaining parts
that give you enough information to say the triangles are congruent. Once you have that, go ahead and say the triangles are congruent with SSS, SAS, ASA, or AAS. If they wanted you to prove the triangles congruent, then you can stop there. But if they instead wanted you to prove parts congruent, take it one step further and say that those parts are congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent.